God. When I in pain, I see the stars. I hear the my soul, my Savior God to thee. Oh, my Savior God to thee. I save your God to thee. How great um, with shouts of acclamation. What joy shall fill my Humble adoration Pray thou all oh God to thee Things my Please be. Good afternoon. I'm the pastor here at St. Philip. Uh, we welcome you. Uh, we're sorry to welcome you. On we we know that it's a joyous occasion, and so. We're glad to be uh, celebrating uh, with missions. Certainly, we want um, you know, don't worry. Just relax and do what everybody I celebrate in prayer today. So grateful that our celebration of Cheryl's life will uh, be started and I have the honor of presenting the eulogy for Cheryl Biter my mother through me start by thanking my sister and brothers Terry with this honor in the west death is kept at least arm's length from us. So for us to attend a this may be your first funeral, and you may be one eulogy. Eulogy is a Greek word, you for good, logo. I will speak the last collective praises for Cheryl, Aunt Cheryl, Grandma, reflect on my memories with Cheryl, though I encourage you all to keep Cheryl alive, and memories with great storytelling, gather as a community, as friends and family, to lift up and praise the core life work of someone. an honor to be the person to write and speak Cheryl Biter's praises. Though presenting a eulogy is tradition and an honor, I would like to say don't wait until this moment in a person's life to tell them what they mean to you and how they encourage you, how you are amazed with whatever gift it is that they have. Tell them while they're here with you in this world. A reading from 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 21 through 23, and 25 and 26. For man, for as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. 
but each in turn. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, victorious over death. As we gather to honor your faithful servant, Cheryl Ann Shalom Bider, I pray the Holy Spirit would be present to comfort the morning and give us the faith to know eternal Cheryl was unexpectedly February 27th, 2024, just a little bit over two weeks ago. In that two-week interim, I am sure all of us have reflected to one degree or another on what Cheryl meant to us and what made her so special to each of us. In a sense, we have written a personal eulogy about Cheryl and all our thoughts to ourselves from the perspective of who Cheryl was to us, whether it be as Grandma, Mame, thing, because how can I, as one person who knew Cheryl only how can I fittingly describe and honor her with words the same as someone who worked beside her for years or volunteered with her at the hospital and in the community or had meaningful conversation with her over coffee need, or enjoyed her grandmotherly laughter, or as Mark and Terry have, benefiting from a lifetime of love and perseverance as only a mother can give. How can 78 years of a person's life be summarized in seven to eight minutes? In a sense, it can't be. The best we can hope to do is summarize what stood out about that person's life. Looking at a person's life we realize there are many facets, and taken individually, it may seem a person is compartmentalized. Tenants, which cannot, which do carry over into all parts of the person. Prayer warrior, Bible study friend, hospital or church volunteer, aunt, cousin, grandmother. No matter who you were in Cheryl's life, you're going to encounter a woman of diminishing stature who just seemed to continuously joy, not to be confused with happiness, which is solely based on circumstances, is a persistent positive outlook on the world, despite one's circumstance. Spirit, as he causes us to see the found joy based in Jesus Christ and found strength and peace through prayer, oftentimes for hours on end. She would tell me sometimes on the phone how she just spent two or three hours praying that morning in conversation with me she would sometimes try to stifle a smile to give me room to be serious but she could only maintain a straight face for And it regularly showed through in her humor and laughter. She is the only person I've ever known whose dream job and smile all the time. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No Cheryl's love of take communion to the bedridden or homebound, keep a nice apartment for someone in need of a place to stay, 
Or as many of us have enjoyed, her when you open it, her homemade cards were love in an envelope. Yes, she loved to make you laugh and smile and hoped you liked her card, but knowledge of how much God loves her. She didn't love others out of a cosmic command to love. She loved others. knows her individually, and this moved her to love others. Ultimately, Cheryl was someone who was not going to give up. She had hope. Through the trials of life, she did not give up. In challenging times of marriage and parenting, she stayed steadfast and trusted. She endured the passing of loved ones around her through the her best friend, Sue. She didn't fold into a lonely, bitter soul, but continued to seek out life in community, church, and friends and family. Conclusion that she had a hope based on something greater than her present circumstances, something which had shown the power to keep promises made to those who persevere. I point again to the cross of Jesus crucified and to his empty tomb three days later. She wholeheartedly believed in the resurrection and all of Jesus' promises to those who abide in him. Her hope came from knowing one day she would see Jesus face to face as he is, that she would fully be in the presence of our Heavenly Father who reveals as much as he can be understood to us through Scripture. And she also hoped she might see the Holy Spirit who dwelt with her all these years, performing his invisible role to her heart and soul. The other day, as I was preparing to write Cheryl's eulogy, I texted Mark and Terry to ask if there was anything specifically they wanted mentioned. They wanted to be sure her compassion for others, uh, being present for families in the hospital and hospice, and that her humor and faith were made known. She also wanted us to give a special recognition to other people in the family. I also want to give a special recognition to uh, Terry's husband, Joey Townsend, Cheryl's son-in-law. Joey, she was always so thankful for your kind ways, helpful whatever needed to be done, and you know she loved you as a son. Cheryl truly loved to be with friends and family and minister to those in need. But she had a very special place in her heart for her many grandchildren. Mark's son, Tim Hall, Damien and Jill's daughters, Ella and Anna Biter, Theo and Kim's daughter and son, Emily and Matthew Biter, and Laura's and my children, Catherine, Eric, Alex, Eli, and Therese and also a very special place in her heart for her goddaughter, Amy. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 54 through 57. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Cheryl, for you who made much of what you were entrusted with, we are sure you heard the words from our Lord, Well done, good and faithful servant, upon passing from this life to the next. And you are at peace with Christ in heaven, and all those who have gone before you. We love you. We'll all miss you. We'll miss your smile and laughter. May you rest in peace. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the waters of baptism, him to new life. O God, Almighty, your servant Cheryl, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. From the book of the of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed their passing away was thought. And they're going forth from us. But they are in peace. For if in the eyes of men, indeed they be punished, chastise a little, they shall be greatly blessed. Because God tried them, and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrifice himself. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love. Because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. There is nothing I shall want. My shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd I shall not want in verdant pastures he gives me repose beside restful Precious my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name. 
holy, I fear no evil. You are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd. table before me and you anoint my head with oil my cup overflows the Lord is my shepherd there is nothing I shall want there is nothing Goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall from 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we, will, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with a word of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we, we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet with the Lord in the air. Thus we, all, we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. me praise and the story may the according to St. Luke Lord, be on my mind. Today, the first day of the week two of the disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were conversing about all the... 
And it happened that drew near and walked from recognizing him. As they approached the village to which they were going, that he was going on farther. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. So he went in to stay with them. While he was with them at table, he took broke it and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened. From their sight. Then they said to each other, our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us. So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem where they and those with them who were saying, has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the bread. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. I don't think I'm generally cynical, but I would say that few are the times when a picture can capture someone's spirit. This picture captures Cheryl's spirit. I'm not here to praise the photographer. I don't know who the photographer was. I'm more here to rejoice in her spirit. That that very smile, that the light in her eyes, that the way in which she carried herself in this life uh, communicated so much to all of us. And you know that better than me. I've only known her for a year and a half. And that's what I've learned in a year and a half. I can only imagine what all of you have learned over a lifetime. I feel a little redundant today uh, because clearly, uh, Dennis, you missed your calling. You should be doing my job, I think. He did such a beautiful job of sharing with us not only all of your remembrances of Cheryl, but also within the context of the meaning and purpose of her life. And what he wisely and beautifully told us was how there can't be any true and deep and lasting appreciation of her life if it's not seen in the context of our God and our God's life and grace in her. That outside of that context, what are we doing here? That Cheryl took seriously 
her relationship with Christ, that Cheryl understood the depth of the meaning and the purpose of her life. That didn't make her some exalted theologian. That made her a holy woman. And sure, I can't do this, but you all can maybe share a few remembrances of her less than holy moments, maybe one or two. But I'll tell you, I enjoyed being with her for no other reason than when I was with her, I experienced God's love and warmth just by that smile and the very certain fact that I knew she cared about me. And who am I? Who am I? How much more she cared about you, because we know who you are. Our readings today so beautifully frame Cheryl's life. Our first reading calls out the foolishness of the world, the foolishness of the world to think that her death is a tragedy. That's what the world says. What a loss. That's all they see. That's all the world sees. I will say to you that the, I'm sure you feel this more than I, but the, the, the quickness of her death still gets to me a little bit. She was here and she was gone. I, I, it just, that, that quickly. And that, if I know I wrestle with that a little bit, I can only imagine how you all uh, struggle with that. And, and so be it. I, you know, we can't take that away from any of us. I wish I had some way to remove that. I, I, I can't. I can't. But her Leaving this life to go to the life to come is no tragedy. It's no tragedy for her. There's no tragedy for her. And there should be no tragedy for us. Oh, sure, we will miss her tremendously. But she fulfilled her mission, her purpose in this life. And for that, no, no tragedy, only victory. Only victory. Our second reading, you know, gives more perspective where we're, we're called to believe in something that we cannot see. Oh yeah, we say that once we are buried with Christ in baptism, we will rise with Christ. As Christ rose, we will rise. And that's what we're celebrating here today in this moment. And so often that sounds like, you know, religion speak. I kind of don't even know what that means. What does that mean? That question that has to be in all of our hearts and minds, should be in all of our hearts and minds, that that question should be something we reflect upon all the time. What does it mean to say that Jesus lived and died and rose and what does that mean to me? You can't get around that question. You can't get around it. She certainly didn't. She placed her life into that answer. Believed it with all her heart and was all in. I want to live with Christ eternally. So I live with Christ fully now. What an example. Today's gospel, we hear the story of moments after Jesus' resurrection, two of his you know, disciples walking along a road, and all of a sudden this guy comes up and walks with them a little bit and talks to them. 
and starts to talk to them about the scriptures and what God wants of them and how God is important in their life. And there's something about this guy. And then he's going to leave. And they say, no, 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 don't leave. Stay with us a little longer. Okay. So he celebrates a meal with them. And it's in the meal that they recognize it's the Lord. And with that, he's gone. And in that moment, they don't lament that he's gone. What do they say? Weren't our hearts burning when he walked with us and spoke with us about our God? To me, that's Cheryl. She walked in our midst for a time, and she used that time beautifully to be with us, to share her life and her wisdom with us, her love, which wasn't hers. It was given her by God, and she freely shared it. And she had come to know the Lord in such a way that she was willing to share that with others. And we recognized God in her, maybe even around a meal that maybe she cooked or you cooked but you shared together and boom she's gone so what will you do now will you lament that she's gone or will you take the power of this moment to say my heart burned with the love of my mother of my grandmother of my friend. My heart burned with that love. What do the disciples do when they realize they were with the Lord? They went to tell other people about it. And that's what we get to continue to do. This celebration is for a brief time, and then we go out into our world to tell people about this woman we knew. Because while she was with us, our hearts burned. We knew we were in the presence of someone who loved. My brothers and sisters, she rejoices today that you're here not, not for her. If you've come here for her, it's like the disciples that go to the tomb and they look in and find it empty. And there's an angel there that says, what are you looking for? There's nothing here. That's what she says right now. What are you looking for? There's nothing here. That's the question. What are you looking for? Let the wisdom of this one woman's grace-filled story not perfect, with her sins and her difficulties, all about it. But let the witness of her life not be what we come here to celebrate, because that's not what she's celebrating. She's not celebrating her life right now. Whose life is she celebrating right now? Okay, I get a whisper. I get a whisper. Come on. Whose life is she celebrating now? Jesus. She's celebrating Jesus. So too should we. Amen.
My brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his church, confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord, in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to him, his. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. In baptism, Cheryl received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead her over the waters of death. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, our sister Cheryl, welcome her into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy. Hear. before us. Grant them an everlasting home with your Son. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known in your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. The family and friends of Cheryl seek comfort and consolation, heal their pain, and grieve. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our sister Cheryl, strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. Healer of souls, lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound, saved a wretch like me, I once was lost, but now I am found, t'was blind, but now I see T'was grace that taught my heart to fear And grace my fears relieved How precious did that grace appear I first
God, the only We humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant. She who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Lift up your hearts. truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful, Lord, life is changed, not ended, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust... An eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. seated as you're able. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Gregory, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Cheryl, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who is united with your Son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom on earth as it is. Trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us. Lord, we pray from every evil, gracious mercy, we may be always free. the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Mercy on us, Lamb of God, Prince of the world, have mercy on us. Away the sins of the world, grant us takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For the reception of communion, we'll form two lines uh, coming We ask those who might be of other faith traditions to simply cross your hands and allow us to give you a blessing, and those Catholics who are prepared to receive communion to do so as you normally would. Thank you.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our sister Cheryl may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister Cheryl. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death. Quietly, peacefully, may Cheryl rest in you. Quietly, peacefully, bring her home to you. Go in peace as the saints. Lead you on your way. May the angels take you home to God's holy place. Quietly, peacefully, may Cheryl rest in you. Quietly, peacefully, bring her home to you. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Cheryl in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Cheryl in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister Cheryl forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In peace, let, let us take our sister to her place of rest. Show. 
shelter of the Lord, who abide in his shadow for life. Say to the Lord, my refuge, my rock in whom I trust, and he will raise you up on eagle's wings. There you are.
Así está uno. bien. Okay. Se escucha bien.
nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Amén. Que el Señor Jesús, que sufrió por nosotros y por su misterio pascual, nos redimió este con todos ustedes. Y con su Espíritu. Padre Santísimo, Tú quisiste que la cruz de Tu Hijo fuera fuente de todas las bendiciones y el origen de toda gracia. Concédenos que los que en la tierra nos mantenemos fieles a los misterios de su sagrada pasión, lleguemos al cielo con el gozo de su resurrección. Te lo pedimos en el nombre de Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amén. Amén. Bienvenidos a nuestra celebración de la, del Via Crucis. Nos pueden acompañar caminando. Vamos a estar caminando las estaciones. Pueden seguir detrás de nosotros lo que así lo deseen. Y empezamos caminando hacia la primera estación. Primera estación, Jesús es condenado a muerte. Te adoramos, Cristo, y te bendecimos porque con tu santa cruz redimiste al mundo. Y los principales sacerdotes le acusaban de muchas cosas. De nuevo, le, de nuevo Pilato le preguntó, diciendo, ¿no respondes a nada?, Mira de cuántas cosas te acusan. Pero Jesús no respondió nada más. De modo que Pilato estaba asombrado. Jesús, en un mundo que busca poder y control, ayúdame a recordar tu silencio. Ayúdame a darme cuenta que el verdadero poder siempre realiza la vida y que nunca la destruye. Que siempre pueda ser consciente que el poder viene de ti y debe usarse para tu servicio dame Jesús divino y aunque sea junto a Jesús junto a la cruz segunda estación Te adoramos, Cristo, y te bendecimos. Jesús carga con la cruz. Entonces, los soldados del gobernador llevaron a Jesús al pretorio y reunieron alrededor de él a todo el cohorte romano y desnudándolo, le pusieron encima un manto escarlata. Y tejiendo una corona de espinas, se lo pusieron sobre su cabeza y una caña en su mano derecha. Y arrodillándose delante de él, le hicieron burla diciendo, Salva, rey de los judíos. Y escumpiéndole, tomaron la caña y le golpearon en la cabeza. De después de haberse burlado de él, le quitaron el manto, le pusieron su ropa y le llevaron, lo llevaron para crucificarle. Amado Jesús, aceptaste tu cruz valientemente. Ayúdame a estar consciente de que mis acciones pueden crear cargas para otros que quizás conozco o quizás desconozco. Que siempre pueda elegir mis acciones cuidadosamente, conscientemente intentando reducir el sufrimiento de mis prójimos. Jesús divino, aunque duro el camino, junto a ti hacia tu cruz. Tercera estación, Jesús, Santa Cruz, redivista al mundo.
con todo, mas él fue herido por nuestras transgresiones. Jesús, caíste en frente a las debilidades o mortificaciones. Estación, Jesús se encuentra con su redimida al mundo. Que ha sido puesto de contradicción. Tú nos enseñas en nuestras vidas, siempre hay momentos de aceptar esos momentos con fe, sino que nos fortalezcan en esas ocasiones que se presentan. Simón de que venía del campo era un gran multitud del pueblo Jesús tú, tú, tú ayúdame a tener la sabiduría que nunca me Sexta estación. La Verónica limpia el rostro de Jesús. Te adoramos, Cristo, y te bendecimos que por tu Santa Cruz ha redimido al mundo. Un mandamiento nuevo les doy. Que se amen los unos a los otros. Que como yo los he amado, así también se amen los unos a los otros. Amado Jesús, compartiste tu propia imagen con Verónica. Ayúdame a creer siempre en la bondad que hay en mí y compórtame de acuerdo a ella. Que mi vida refleje siempre la luz de la vida de Dios que hay en mí. Séptima estación, Jesús cae por segunda vez. Gracias, Cristo, y te bendecimos que por tu santa cruz reunimos al mundo. Y hallándose en forma de hombre, se humilló a sí mismo, haciéndose obediente hasta la muerte, y muerte de cruz. Jesús sufriente, sufriente caíste, caíste otra, otra vez, vez. ayúdame y nunca, nunca permite que el, que el sufrimiento de mis prójimos continúe para mí, para mi vida, vida pueda permanecer, permanecer y tranquilo, que siempre esté listo para levantar a mis hermanas y hermanos, aún a cosa de mí mismo. Octava estación. Jesús habla a las hijas de Jerusalén. Te adoramos, Cristo, y te bendecimos, que porque con tu santa cruz redimiste al mundo. Y 
le seguía una gran multitud del pueblo y de las mujeres que lloraban y se lamentaban por él. Pero Jesús, volviéndose a ellas, dijo, Hijas de Jerusalén, no lloréis por mí, llorar más bien por vosotras mismas y por vuestros hijos. Jesús compasivo, en medio de tu sufrimiento, volviste tu rostro hacia los demás. Ayúdame a entender que mi salvación está relacionada con cada uno de mis prójimos. Que siempre pueda trabajar por la paz y la justicia por mis prójimos. Y al mismo tiempo estoy trabajando por mi paz y justicia. Novena estación, Jesús cae por tercera vez, te adoramos Cristo y te bendecimos porque con su santa cruz redimiste al mundo. En verdad, en verdad os digo, si el grano de trigo no cae en tierra y muere, queda él solo, pero si muere, produce mucho fruto. Jesús, recibiste a los pecadores y a los marginados. Ayúdame a abrir mi corazón a mis prójimos, sin que primero los juzgue, que pueda ser tan generoso e incondicional de amor hacia ellos como tú lo has sido conmigo. Décima estación, Jesús es despojado de sus vestiduras. Te adoramos, Cristo, y te bendecimos porque por con Santa, Santa Cruz nos redimirá el mundo. Le llevaron al lugar llamado Gólgota, que traduce significa lugar de la calavera, y trataron de darle vino mezclado con mirra. Pero él no lo tomó. Cuando le crucificaron, se repartieron sus vestidos, echando suerte sobre ellos para decidir lo que cada uno tomaría. Querido Jesús, tu vida es un testimonio de la belleza y dignidad de toda la vida humana. Ayúdame a respetar la dignidad en todas las personas en todo el estado de vida, en todas las razas y credos, que pueda trabajar cada día para apreciar y aceptar la bondad y originalidad de todas las personas. Undécima estación, Jesús es clavado en la cruz. Te adoramos, Cristo, y te bendecimos que por tu con santa, tu santa cruz, cruz redimiste al mundo. Cuando, cuando llegaron al lugar llamado la calavera, crucificaron ahí a Jesús. Y a los malhechores uno a la derecha y otro a la izquierda. Y Jesús decía, Padre, perdónalos porque no saben lo que hacen. Y echaron suertes repartiéndose entre sí sus vestidos. Jesús sufriente, aun cuando estás con Dios, deseaste soportar el sufrimiento y la muerte. Ayúdame a seguir tu ejemplo y nunca caer 
en que yo en mi vida que me causa dolor que verdaderamente crea que el resultado de morir y la muerte siempre es una vida más grande décima estación Jesús muere en la cruz te adoramos Cristo y te bendecimos que por tu santa, santa cruz me diste al mundo cuando llegó la hora sexta hubo oscuridad sobre toda la tierra hasta la hora novena y a la hora novena Jesús exclamó con fuerte voz, Eloí, Eloí, lama sabactani, que traducido significa, Dios mío, Dios mío, ¿por qué me has abandonado? Y Jesús, dando un fuerte grito, expiró. Jesús abandonado en la hora de tu muerte aún tus, tus amigos, amigos más cercanos te abandonaron ayúdame a aceptar la muerte de mis prójimos cuando, cuando sin embargo debería de luchar en contra de la muerte cuando eso sea fruto de la injusticia la guerra, el odio o la... que pueda llegar a saber que la vida es más fuerte que la muerte Jesús divino, aunque es duro el camino, junto a ti hacia tu cruz. Décimo tercera estación, Jesús es bajado de la cruz. Te adoramos, Cristo, y te bendecimos que por tu santa, santa cruz veniste al mundo. Y había un hombre llamado José, miembro del concilio, varón bueno y justo, el cual no había ascendido al plan y había producir de los demás, que era de Arimatea, ciudad de los judíos, y que esperaba el reino de Dios. Este fue a Pilato y le pidió el cuerpo de Jesús. Jesús, tu sufrimiento terreno, aunque para quienes están alrededor tuyo, se hacen más dolorosos que nunca. Ayúdame a darme cuenta que aunque cada piedra es dolorosa, ese dolor puede hacerse una oportunidad para un nuevo crecimiento, que nunca pueda ser vencido por la muerte, sino que le acepte el ejemplo de María y que llegue a encontrar la verdadera plenitud de la vida. Décimo cuarta estación, te adoramos Cristo y te bendecimos que por tu santa cruz venimiste salvo. Jesús es sepultado. Y bajándolo, él le, volvi, él le volvió en un lienzo de lino y le puso en un sepulcro excavado en la roca donde nadie había sido puesto todavía. Y las mujeres que habían venido con él desde Galilea siguieron detrás y vieron el sepulcro y cómo fue colocado el cuerpo. Y cuando regresaron, prepararon especiales aromáticas y perfumes. Jesús, todos aquellos que más te amaron, 
todavía no entienden la promesa de tu vida, ayúdame a confiar en tu vida. Tu amor siempre es tan disponible para mí, aun cuando parecen difíciles de encontrar. Que viva cada día lleno con tu vida, que es más fuerte que la muerte, hasta que seamos uno para siempre. las palabras que Cristo nos dio nos atrevemos a decir todos juntos Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo santificado sea tu nombre venga a nosotros tu reino así es tu voluntad la tierra como en el cielo danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día perdona nuestras ofensas como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden no nos deje caer en la tentación del mal. Dios Todopoderoso y Eterno, que nos has restaurado a la vida con la muerte triunfante y la resurrección de Jesucristo, continúa esta obra sanadora dentro de cada uno de nosotros, que quienes participamos en este misterio nunca nos cansemos de servirte, esto te lo pedimos en nombre de tu Hijo Jesucristo, nuestro Señor. Nos preparamos para recibir la bendición. Señor, envía tu bendición sobre tu pueblo, quienes devotamente recuerdan la muerte de tu Hijo, con la segura esperanza de la resurrección. Otórgales tu perdón, confórtalos, que su fe aumente y su salvación eterna se afirme. Te lo pedimos en nombre de Cristo nuestro Señor. Mis amigos, hemos sido testigos de la pasión vivificante de Cristo. Vayamos todos en paz. Que el Señor los bendiga en el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Amén. Tenemos presente a una unos testigos que vienen a hablarnos un poquito se acercan por favor yo creí que eran dos yo creí que eran dos ¿Tú Tania. 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 vamos a escuchar a Tania y lo que ella nos tiene que decir en estos momentos y gracias a los jóvenes que nos ayudaron Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Tania, como bien dijo el diácono Etiel, eh, y esta noche me invitaron a compartir un pequeño testimonio sobre cómo ha sido pues, mi caminar con el Señor. Eh, bueno, para empezar, que sepan que gracias a Dios pues, tuve la bendición de nacer y crecer dentro de una familia católica, que pues crecí como en ese ambiente. Ves, mis recuerdos de, de, de pequeña, pues son, pues yo siempre estando en una iglesia, eh, ir a misa todos los domingos, tengo como muy presentes esos recuerdos. Por ejemplo, en la cuaresma recuerdo siempre ir a los Via Crucis. Siempre estar como en, involucrada pues en algo. Y bueno, hice mi primera comunión cuando tenía como entre 9 y 10 años. Y luego el tiempo pues fue pasando, fui creciendo. Y por circunstancias de la vida, o, pues yo ahora lo digo, por designios del Señor, pues no había hecho mi confirmación. Eh, pues en el tiempo que que me tocaba, pues, en la edad, ¿no?, en la adolescencia. Entonces, el tiempo fue pasando, fui creciendo, 
y pues cumplí la mayoría de edad y pues no sé, como que siempre en, ese, en estos años como que me estuve como mudando de ciudad en ciudad, en ciudad entonces como que el tiempo iba pasando, iba pasando hasta que pues llegué, llegamos aquí a esta ciudad y empecé a venir a esta iglesia, eso fue en el 2019 y como seis, ocho meses después pues eh, empezó la pandemia y ya pues todos sabemos lo que sucedió, se cerraron las iglesias y todo, entonces otro año más que pasó, pero yo siempre estaba como en mi mente o oh, el deseo de hacer mi, mi confirmación y hasta que nuevamente pues reabrieron las iglesias y empezamos nuevamente a asistir y un domingo vi el anuncio de Rica en el boletín y pues en ese entonces no sabía ni tenía ni idea que era Rica ni nada, no sabía qué era eso y, pero vi que decía eh, catequesis para adultos que deseaban pues eh, como tener los sacramentos, ¿verdad? Entonces, y pues aparecía ahí un número de contacto y llamar a esta persona y ya. Y entonces, pues dije, voy a llamar a ver qué, a ver qué pasa. Y ya pues llamé a la persona que salía ahí, me dieron la información, me dijeron pues que tenía que venir tal día, hacer una entrevista. Y ya me recuerdo que vine ese día de la entrevista y inicié... Pues inicié con el proceso de RICA, eso fue en enero del 2021 y en septiembre del, de ese mismo año eh, pues finalmente pues hice mi, mi confirmación pero obviamente al principio cuando empecé RICA pues mi único objetivo era pues recibir mi sacramento ¿no? o sea no, no tenía otra más intención y pero durante el proceso, eh, como que se despertó en mí como una curiosidad, vamos a decirlo así, de como querer aprender más sobre nuestra fe católica. Porque, pues, como bien dije, pues, tuve la bendición de nacer dentro de una familia católica, pero, pues, como yo sabía, o sea, lo básico que cualquier católico sabe, ¿no?, que los diez mandamientos, las oraciones, venir a misa todos los domingos y participar de las diferentes actividades y eso. Pero, eh, conforme yo venía a las sesiones de Rica, yo escuchaba hablar sobre temas y como que a mí me iban como llamando la atención. Y yo quería, pues, aprender más sobre nuestra fe. Porque mm, a veces siento que como jóvenes... Eh, Pensamos muchas veces que nuestra fe católica siempre nos, nos está como invitando como siempre a un no, como no puedes hacer esto, o tal cosa es pecado, no hagas esto, no hagas lo otro. Y entonces, pues, también yo veía a las personas que, estaban, que me estaban ayudando en ese proceso, los catequistas, y yo veía como como ellos se relacionaban con las otras personas y yo decía como, o sea, tienen como algo diferente como, y yo quería saber qué, qué era eso diferente. Entonces, así fue como, pues, empecé a investigar más sobre nuestra fe, eh, a leer, eh, por ejemplo, documentos de la iglesia y, bueno, las personas que me conocen saben que soy bastante tímida y, o sea, como hablar en frente de las personas me da como miedo. Y entonces, al principio, cuando empecé a venir a las, a las sesiones de Rica, pues yo siempre, siempre llegaba y me sentaba en una silla y simplemente escuchaba. O sea, no, no decía nada, ninguna palabra, nada. Pero poco a poco, yo digo, y pues las personas también me lo han dicho, como que el Espíritu Santo fue obrando en mí y pues poco a poco iba como agarrando confianza y daba pues mis opiniones sobre el tema o lo que fuera que, que estuviéramos hablando y así fue pasando el tiempo, pasando el tiempo y pues como lo dije, 
Finalmente, pues hice mi, recibí el sacramento de la confirmación. Y igual, como yo ya había, como ya se había como despertado, como esa curiosidad de mí, decidí seguir asistiendo a Rica, aunque pues ya no tenía la necesidad de hacerlo. Pero decidí seguir viniendo y siempre venía cada domingo. Y pues me gustaba porque siempre aprendí, aprendía algo nuevo. Aunque tal vez el tema que veíamos ya lo había vuelto a ver, entonces, pero siempre, siempre aprendí algo nuevo. O la persona que lo daba pues era alguien diferente y siempre decía algo, algo pues interesante que, me, que a mí me llamaba la atención. Y pues así fue pasando el tiempo hasta que el año pasado pues me hicieron la invitación si quería formar parte del, de los catequistas de Rica. Y obviamente mi respuesta al principio cuando me lo dijeron no fue ni sí ni no. Simplemente dije, pues, lo voy a pensar. Y pues sí lo pensé, lo, lo puse en oración, y, pero al final pues yo dije, si el Señor pues me está llamando a servir de esta manera, es porque pues Él tiene un propósito para mí. Entonces al final pues di, eh, acepté y dije que sí, que iba a ser parte de los catequistas y ahora pues desde el año pasado soy catequista de Rica y pues estoy ¿no? en este en este proceso y sigo aprendiendo y estoy muy agradecida con pues todas las personas que el Señor ha puesto en mi camino que pues me han ayudado a seguir perseverando porque como jóvenes y más pues hoy en día sabemos que es bastante difícil porque pues allá afuera hay muchas como distracciones que como que nos desenfocan muchas veces. Pero sí, gracias pues a las oraciones de, de todas las personas que me rodean y también pues las personas, yo digo que esto también me ha ayudado mucho que como que me han invitado. O sea, me, me, siempre me están como constantemente invitando, como, bueno, Tania, ¿quieres hacer esto? Eh, Tania, mira, ¿quieres ayudarnos así? Entonces, pues, y siempre pues estoy dispuesta a ayudar en lo que sea. Y siento a veces que a los jóvenes siento que les falta como eso, como invitación. Que las personas, pues los que ya están dentro de la iglesia, los inviten ¿no? a participar de de cualquier cosa, ¿no? Y yo creo que este, poco a poco el Señor va poniendo como en el corazón de cada persona el deseo de, de servir, ya sea de, de la manera que sea, porque pues todos tenemos cualidades, ¿no? Virtudes diferentes que el Señor nos ha dado y podemos servir en diferentes, eh, de diferentes formas. Pero sí, eh, simplemente pues agradecer a todas las personas que me han ayudado eh, pues en este en este caminar y que como dije pues sigo aprendiendo de, de cada persona y, y nada que, que me tengan pues en sus oraciones para seguir perseverando en este camino gracias Gracias a Dios, gracias al testimonio de Tania. Um, quiero a Dios que haya más jóvenes como Tania que se animen a, a adentrarse más y más en el camino humano y cristiano y que ayuden a nuestra iglesia a revitalizarse, a rejuvenecerse. Ojalá que su vida, su testimonio, sea una invitación a otros o a otras jóvenes que quieran y puedan, vale la pena, pues dedicar un poquito de tiempo y talento a, a Dios en la iglesia. Tenemos hoy viernes, como siempre, la, la sopa para compartir. Creo que el menú es tailandés, o sea que es sopa thai. Así que invitamos a todos de manera muy cordial y fraterna a que nos puedan acompañar en el, en el Paris Hall. 
Así que ahí compartiremos la, la, la sopa de, de, de cuaresma. Gracias una vez más por su participación en el Via Crucis. Vamos a la, a la cena, a la sopa.